I can. Do you need to? Yeah, you go. There's your water. That's <laughs> all good. No I worries. Miss, I miss standing in front of people. Honestly, like I, I like the, the you know this this physical thing is just it's just it's this is not the same. But uh, it is next, not next same. year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, it, it is not the same. I think you and I both sort of mentioned that because I think last year we both presented at a, a yeah. talk where we had to pre-record our talks and how weird that was just yeah, yeah. You know, pre-recording yeah. in that setup. But well, there, there, there will be a demo in this talk. And so that is an excellent way to prove that it's not recorded. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Let me, I think we're at the top of it or we're at 40 after or <clears throat> so we'll, <clears throat> all right. Welcome back to Zeke Week 2021, and now we have Christian Cry back up. He's going to be talking about the ZKG package templating, and I'm very excited about this because we get asked a lot of questions about uh, this side of things. And so, Christian, I'll let you introduce yourself to folks and take it away. Sure. Thank you, Amber. So, uh, welcome, folks. I'm, I'm Christian Krybeck. I work at Corelight. I uh, am part of the open source team uh, where I'm a, a, a merge master, and I'm sort of the an official perhaps maintainer for ZKG for the package uh, manager for Zeek and also work on sort of, you know, a few other things in, in uh, the project as, as Robin sketched earlier. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about a couple of new things that we've introduced to ZKG, in particular, its uh, ability to uh, support package templates so to simplify the task of bootstrapping packages. And so, Perhaps for folks who are you know, new to Zeek, I, I figured a, a very quick sort of recap of what ZKG is, is uh, gonna be a good idea. So it's Zeek's package manager. Um, Zeek packages are basically our concept of a modular sort of entity that contains things that are useful and reusable in Zeek. So they can uh, come in different shapes and sizes. They can just contain like useful scripts, protocol analyzers. So, so native code, like things that are built under the hood for you. Uh, built-in functions, which some of you guys might know, so basically that create new ties between native code and scripting layer, um, and sort of other you know custom functionality. There's a lot of stuff that you can 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 do there, and generally speaking, that package manager is sort of analogous to to others that you might know from your system, like all those you know three-letter candidates, pip, dnf, apt. Um, in the sense that you know, packages can build upon other packages, that there are repositories that you can query, that you can use to install things, upgrade, and so forth. There's this one interesting sort of property about ZKG, which is a little unique perhaps in that it's built very heavily on Git, um, which is mainly because it gives you a lot of nice um, sort of properties around uh, you know, managing how you retrieve a package onto your system, how you select a particular version, uh, a particular line of work in a branch and so forth. Um, but it is sometimes a little quirky when things go wrong because then you're faced sort of with, you know, Git details that don't seem very sort of uh, immediately obvious if you're not, you know, sort of in, in the system. Um, but most of the time I would say that, you know, it, 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 that users should barely notice that. Um, ZKG has a, the, the notion of a, a default package repository that is linked here. Um, we tend to call that a, a package source because the name repository is so, so overloaded in this space. And if you go there, you'll see that it's basically an index into other repositories out on, on GitHub mostly, I believe, uh, but technically anywhere um, for things that people have built. And the, uh, the package manager has existed for a long time. Um, but it's been shipped with Zeek if you install it um, since 4.0. Um, and so that simplified a bunch of the workflow with Zeek because you basically no longer have to configure ZKG independently. And it basically should just work sort of from the get-go. You can still continue to install it individually separately if you want, because it's just um, a module that we maintain on PyPy. So you can just say pip install ZKG and, ZKG, and you are done. So that's a quick sort of recap. So, uh, okay, so you've, you've sort of tinkered with this and now you, it's time for you to create your first package. And so what do you do? So the Sledgehammer version is that you start from scratch, right? And um, that is totally feasible. Uh, you will probably learn a ton of stuff doing that and it's gonna take you a long time. And so that is for the vast majority of people, probably not the way to do this. And therefore, so what else are you gonna do? Um, so traditionally there've been two ways to really sort of get started. So um, you copy somebody else's work and sort of throw out everything you don't need, which is okay, but sort of a little clunky, right? 
um, you will never really know what were the reasons for why people change stuff or why certain things are there and it's just not very sort of clean but it's a good way to understand what other people are doing so it's you know okay and then there's a tool called init plugin that um, folks may have seen particularly if they've actually read the documentation about how to you know build packages in the past which is sort of buried a little bit in the development tools for for Zeek. There's a submodule where we have sort of our devil, you know, tools and, and it's in there. And it's basically this notion of a template. Like you can give it some arguments and, and it has sort of a skeleton and it puts in some values for you and, and, and off you go. Um, and you can tell that it's sort of a little uh, sort of outdated because like the first indication is the name. It's sort of from an era where Zeek plugins and Zeek packages were separate things. Um, and it sort of got package, uh, package support sort of tucked onto it. Um, but um, yeah, it's sort of been sitting there and it's, it's sort of a good start, but it's sort of not, it doesn't really feel like sort of the right solution. So we figured that nicer would be if you could just do this right out of ZKG. Like what if you could just run a ZKG command um, and it lets you bootstrap packages. And last year, um, Vlad and I gave a talk at Zeek Week 20 uh, where we basically explored templating. So where we looked at, you know, what could this look like? What, what are things that you could build that way? And it sort of got us going in this in this in this direction. Um, and so this is really sort of the gist of the talk today. So there's a, a, a command in zkg these days called zkg create that lets you bootstrap packages. And so this is basically a full blown templating system that is now in zkg. And the way it works is actually pretty straightforward. When you say zkg create, zkg basically reaches out to a, a template repository. Uh, in, a, in a template repository, there is um, a, you know, a set of features that a template can provide. And these templates are customizable via variables that you as the user have to provide. And then uh, ZKG gets going and puts out you know, a new package for you. And this is actually there right now for you to use. So if you check out your ZKG that has been shipped with Zeek starting at uh, version 4.1, or if any of you actually follow the individual ZKG versions, it's 2.9. Um, so you have this right there. And there is a separate you know, Git repository for the default template itself that it's linked here, that is linked here at the, at the bottom. You can check that out. You can, you can take a look at the README and so forth. But you don't really have to in order to use this because ZKG will just do this for you transparently. Um, and so I, I just briefly mentioned this notion of features. So what are template features? They're basically self-contained optional functionality that you want to have or may want to have in a package. And this could be all kinds of things that you know, you've, you've found useful over the course of you know, like working with packages. It could just be excuse me, um, a test harness, perhaps for, for B-test, most likely for B-test, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it could be plugins. So like I mentioned earlier, native code that can do various things. It could be a copyright, it could be CI workflows. There are lots of things that you'll find useful sort of, you know, sort of again and again as you work with more packages. And uh, if you ever wonder what a given template that you're working with um, supports, there is another command that's now in ZKG that is in this new um, ZKG template namespace that is called ZKG template info that basically summarizes what a template can do for you. And so, this default template that I mentioned earlier has, you know, a, a good starting point in terms of feature support, but it's not by any means sort of complete. And I guess it, it can never be complete because people will have different sort of, you know, requirements for what should be in there. And then, you know, the idea is that they can build on the default template or they can just write their own from scratch. So what we have in there right now is, is a test harness, is a basic plugin, is a copyright file, and is CI workflows for GitHub selectively if you want any of those things. Um, this is the developer track. So I figured I'd put in a slide about the implementation. So it's kind of interesting if you sort of work with the stuff um, under the hood. So, so a template is not um, a passive construct that we just copy and put some sort of you know, variable substitutions into, but it's active Python code, the code that actually runs and some input files. So it basically runs kind of like a new Python module um, you know, inside Zeek. Um, there's a bit of sort of API compatibility stuff and so forth. And basically in order to build a template, you just sort of derive a couple of classes, create some objects sort of that is in a uh, separate module in the, Zeek, the ZKG sort of Python module. Um, 
And then it just builds upon a bunch of stuff that is already there. So ZKG also uh, already has this notion of, of user variables where you can have sort of user input to things. Um, and uh, a nice benefit of, of it actually being Python code is that you can control everything. So, so if, if you want to um, you know, programmatically create a file sort of via some, some logic, you can do that. You don't have to sort of write out a template text and then substitute some values and, and write that out. And you'll find that there are many parallels to how ZKG currently already does uh, or deals with, with, with packages in that, you know, as I already mentioned, they, these, these things live in, in repositories. There is tagging and branching also for the templates and, and, and so forth. But, but this shouldn't sound daunting. This is really just if you actually want to tinker with building templates for yourself. Um, and otherwise, you can pretty much just, just use that stuff. So demo. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. I, I uh, wanted to show you a couple things here. Um, let's see how much time do I have? We're about 10 minutes in, right? So um, this is big enough. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you, um, since I think it's still a little confusing to some folks how ZKG now actually is tied into Zeek itself, is where stuff is. So if you um, look in, you know, your, your, your current Zeek installation, you will probably, so this is sort of the, 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 the typical sort of, you know, top level tree for that. Um, there is a directory called etc that, you know, you will be familiar with if you've used Zeek control in the past. And you'll notice that there's a directory in there that is for ZKG and that has a config file. So the ZKG that comes with Zeek is hardwired to pick up that config by default though you can still give it another one if you want to. But that's basically where the logic comes from that makes it all work with this particular Zeek installation. And if you um, go into this folder, the varlib uh, subtree, you'll notice that there is a ZKG directory as well. And that is now where ZKG by default maintains its state um, in that Zeek installation. So I just wanted to show that real quick. OK, so let's create some. Let's create some packages. So the simplest thing you can do is basically just say zkg create, and you always have to give it uh, an output directory for your new um, package, and that's called package dir, and we'll call it you know test package. And so this is an instance now of it asking you for user input. Um, there, like I mentioned, this is a concept that has been in the in, in zkg in the past. Um, already. And so there are different ways of providing that variable. And um, I'm not going to show all of that today. I don't think I, there's enough time for that. But so if you don't give it to ZKG via environment variables or additional flags, um, it will basically just prompt you for it. And so let's give this thing a name. This is basically to um, create you know, a module in the, in the scripting layer and, and, and so forth. And so now there is your first you know, package. And if you look at what's there, um, this is sort of what you would expect. There's, yeah, there's basically nothing above here. So you see that there's a really sort of small, you know, scripts tree, um, and then actually a pretty big sort of testing harness that is, you know, what B-test can do for you out of the box, and you know, the the usual metadata file. Um, and uh, let's see what we do next. Okay, let me just um, let me just install this. So this will this will you know do the usual things that you do with the package manager. Um, so if I list it, that is you know now there. And if I let's see if I do Zeek uh, site test package, then I can also run this. And you didn't see this before, but if I go into scripts main.zeek, then you know hello world is is indeed what <laughs> what is, is all that that package does right now. Okay, so. Um, that was sort of one thing. Um, let's blow that away. Um, maybe uh, for just a minute, let me actually show you what else the command can do. Oh, sorry. Uh, not ZKG. <laughs> ZKG create. Oh. So there's a bunch of stuff here. I, I won't read it all in detail. You're, this is available to you today. So if you run ZKG right now, you will see this too. But just very quickly, so I, I covered the, the output directory. There is a, a particular version of the template, of the default template or another that you can pick up. Uh, and this is what we're about to get to. This is more interesting. This is where you basically select the additional features that you can have in um, the resulting package. And you can also pick 
a different template if you want. So if you, uh, if you point the command at a different URL, then it will take you know, that template uh, repository instead of the default. And then there are ways to control you know, the, the, the variable input. <laughs> okay, so let's create another package and let's make this one a little bit more ambitious. So let's say ckg create and, oh, actually, so let me, let me demo very quickly uh, the, the template info ability. So if you just say that and don't provide additional uh, sort of flags, then you basically see some features that the default template provides, right? And you see that, that it currently has these, these three features. It's uh, CI support for GitHub, it's licensing, and it's a basic sort of plugin. and explains the user variables a little bit and so forth. So let's, let's, let's try that out. So let's just go a whole hog and, and say, okay, I want um, you know, GitHub CI support. The, uh, the, the, the order in which I do this actually doesn't really matter. Uh, and a plugin. And again, we'll say package dir uh, test package. And so the only difference now is that it adds in more stuff and therefore needs to know a couple more things. So I will say test package like before. Uh, native code requires namespacing. Uh, so I will say uh, seek week. Uh, it needs an author for the license. Um, it knows how to grab something about me from my Git configuration. So that's what it pulled up here and I'll keep that. And let's pick a license and let's say BSD2 clause, short and sweet. And so here's this new package. And so there is a little bit more going on now. Um, so you see that there's this, 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 this plugin folder over here now. Um, and uh, yeah, basically just, just a little bit more stuff. And I wanted to show you one thing about this, this CI support. So over here, uh, over in my GitHub space, I've created a new you know, empty repository. And so I'm hoping you know, that I can now show you what this looks like when I actually put this over. So I'm gonna say, you know, yeah. You've got um, a little artifact left over from your last slide. It yeah. says you know, in the middle of your screen. Uh, sorry, what does it say, Amber? Well, it fixed it now. Oh, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, thank you for thank you for helping me out. Um, so I will just you know add this this repository and push that over. And in the meantime, so while that is doing its thing now, I can show you a little bit more stuff. So one thing that I wanted to show you is how the repository actually gets initialized. So there is an initial commit that captures some of you know, the tooling that you used at the time. Um, and you, are, you don't have to keep that commit as is. You can amend if you don't like what it created by default, you, could, you can change things like that's, that is okay. Um, and what I also wanted to show you is that there's this, um, the, the, the metadata file when created by this template has a bit more state and it's this, this stuff down here. So it basically shows you, okay, so what was the template that it got created from? It shows you what version that was. It shows you the features that you used and it shows you the input that you used. And the reason for this is that if we want to update things in that template later, which is sort of a touchy subject, and I'm gonna to get to that in just a second, um, then we need a way to understand what was the original input so we can do that again. And so this, this, this captures this. Okay. Um, I think I'm running a little short on time. I'll just sort of, sort of go back over here and show you where this is right now. So you see that you know, we pushed over this package and uh, one thing that we, we added here was this GitHub CI support, right? And so you can see that that stuff is now running and uh, we're sort of a little bit at the mercy here of how quickly GitHub will run this for us. Um, it normally takes sort of on the order of <clears throat> a little bit over a minute. Um, but what this does out of the box is basically it uses our binary packages um, that we you know, produce that, that you guys might be familiar with um, to test with the current version of Zeek uh, a nightly build and the long-term support version. And it will, all, uh, it will also test this for you periodically so that if Zeek moves underneath you, you will be informed when, for example, your plugin no longer compiles, which is something that you know, pretty much invariably happens over time and, and you wanna know. And so this basically gives you that out of the box. Um, and so, so there you go. I could talk about this more because there's interesting stuff going on under the hood there, but I think I'm a little too short on time. Um, you don't have to know a lot about um, 
uh, how to set up Zeek and so forth these days in order to test your package. If you're interested in this, maybe hit me up in the in the Q uh, Q and A or or just like anytime on Slack. There is even a a GitHub action at this point um, that you can use to just test your packages. All right. Anyway, so um, that pretty much concludes the demo. I didn't actually, huh, I didn't install. Well, okay, it's the same thing. Like if I installed this, you would see that it's that it's showing up as a as a package in the plugin. So I'm just going to go back and finish the last couple of slides. So I, I touched this topic of maintaining packages, and and whenever you bootstrap stuff from from a template, there is at some point invariably this question of like how to keep that stuff up to date, and and so this is tricky stuff. So in in the absolute, this seems impossible because if you start from a a template and then you make arbitrary modifications and the template moves on, then there's no guarantee that that template still relates to what you have in your code base at this point. But in specific contexts, we think that this can work. So some features might know that you just have to replace a given file, or if you want to make a change to the metadata file, that's just an any style file, you can programmatically go in there and make updates, right? Um, so so we're planning to add this kind of support when feasible over time. But for now, if you're wondering, okay, gee, I have this package sitting here. How do I get that up to snuff so that it's got the latest sort of, you know, uh, 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 that follows the latest guidelines sort of in how you lay out a package, then we basically suggest like create a new template from scratch, uh, instantiate a template from scratch and move content over. It's probably easier. And the template cannot, you know, relieve you from the task of actually kind of knowing your stuff when it comes to writing content. Like if you if you want to write a plugin, you will still need to dig into the C++ and so forth to, to understand sort of the headers and, and the classes and so forth. So, so we're hoping here to give you a good starting point. So that stuff that most people will not really want to figure out, like how do I write that, that B-test harness? How do I lay out a plugin? What's sort of the basic files there? Um, so that should be there. So you can then get going. Um, but you'll still have to get going at that point. <laughs> and uh, next steps, of course. So um, an obvious one is that we want more stuff in the default template. And so in particular, right now, Spicy is sort of a biggie and it is not in there right now today, but stay tuned for Benjamin's talk right after me because he's been doing a ton of work on that. And we're gonna reduce init plugin so that it focuses on what the name suggests, namely just plugins. It, it's very useful for that. But so it removes this ambiguity between sort of plugins and packages a little bit. And then the, the template itself needs, needs testing. So we want to put that you know, into CI so that it too tells us when you know, uh, Zeek moves under us and, and things no longer work. And with that, I'm done. I wanted to tell you guys, this is very beta. So this stuff, this stuff is really new. Uh, I, mainly I've been working on it and also creating packages. Though I think some of you have started to submit packages to the, 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 the standard source that were built with it. So that is cool, but don't be shy to create tickets and so forth, or just you know ping us. Um, this stuff is pretty fresh. And with that, I'm done and happy to take your questions. Christian, thank you so much um, for giving this talk. Um, I think you can pop over to the Slack channel and answer anyone's questions and continue.